Hello and welcome to this video that will show you how to turn a passive pair of Control 1G Universe speakers into a Bluetooth connected active pair of speakers with a powerful Class D power amp inside and on top of that we will have a tone board included with volume, treble and bass connectivity. Everything gets powered from a laptop supply uh, standard Lenovo 16 volts and 20 volts supplies will do. As the first step, you need to take one of the speakers apart. To do so, you need to unscrew six screws on the front side of the, one of the cabinets, and then basically the front side uh, comes off and you have access to the inside. The 1G Universe has the advantage that the ceilings that are on this side of the front side. They are not glued as in earlier versions, so that makes it easier to take it off and put things together later on again. Then the next step to get uh, the active project going is you remove the uh, crossover, got a separated unit here, by using the solder iron on these two connectors over here and take the crossover out because it's getting attached to the front side in the way I have done it over here. When you have the crossover unsoldered, you glue it with epoxy glue to the front side of the speaker, as visible here. As well, you need to drill a hole on that edge here to uh, install an indicator lamp for the Bluetooth and the active electronics later on. Then put things nicely together so that your wires get don't get in the way later on. For the Bluetooth connectivity, I've used a well-known module from China, the KRC86B, that you find on eBay cheaply. However, it requires a 5 volt supply, and therefore there are a number of components needed to get the 5 volts uh, supply from the laptop voltage. I figured out in first trials that we get awful noise through, though, and that's basically coming from the laptop supply or from the Class D amplifier. I haven't figured that out. Uh, to get rid of the noise, the regulator is actually not sufficient. You need to add some passive filtering in front of the regulator to get rid of the noise. I did this with two times simple low passes with 120 ohms and 22 microfarads as the first step, followed by another 100 ohms and 22 microfarads, which I just uh, optimized by trial and error and then another 100 nanofarad on the output of the regulator and the big cap uh, that is typically coming with the module. A nice feature of the Control 1G Universe is that it features four stubs on the back side of the cabinet that can be readily used to put some active electronics on. I've put my board here on a beaver board, the Bluetooth assembly on a beaver board, the geometries don't work out to all put this in one place in one step, so first the beaver board goes on the stubs and then actually the power module goes on top of everything. This is how things look like when the beaver board is assembled. The Bluetooth board with the antenna over here is on the back side, mounted on the strip board that I had. There are now four stubs here for the power module to go on top so that when everything is screwed in place it looks like this. At this stage a few words on the wiring. Since this is the active part of the pair of uh, speakers one of the outputs of the amplifier which I actually have reviewed in another YouTube video is directly connected to where the crossover was uh, assembled earlier because this is the link to the second speaker. The other output is inside of the compartment uh, connected to the crossover that we glued to the front side of the cabinet earlier. In the back side you see already the tone board which is an LM1036 based board again bought cheaply from China. I bought the version that you have to assemble yourself because of a few modification that I come to in a minute. Of course there are as well connectors on the back side you'll see them later. One is for the power supply coming from this end so that you can plug in a standard laptop 
and the auxiliary input that goes to the Bluetooth module is not visible here, it's below the tone board. And then of course three holes for the potentiometers and uh, since the thickness of the walls is quite significant you can't screw them from the outside anymore so I, ba I glued everything with epoxy glue tightly into place here um, yeah you can't remove it anymore but I think it's gonna be uh, very stable though make sure that you have enough epoxy glued around the uh, sc the screw heads of the potentiometers because uh, otherwise that will be an air gap that is not good for the sound quality. A quick look on the tone board that I've uh, used here. This tone board typically uses a four diode bridge configuration here uh, for the power supply input to be able to drive this from AC and DC However, in our case, uh, we have only DC and the bridge may actually lift the ground on the module, so that's not a good thing. Therefore, I took just two wires and bridged two of the, instead of two of the diodes, and made this a DC only circuit. As well, an 82 ohms decoupling resistor in the supply was needed, because otherwise I got the same issue with noise as was uh, visible on the Bluetooth module. And then the final modification, I glued these, uh, I soldered the resistors here differently than originally planned, basically to swap treble and bass functionality of pot the potentiometers, because I didn't want to have treble on the bottom of the cabinet. In the corner here you see as well a small dip, uh, a small jumper head. Uh, that one is used to select either the loudness functionality of the module or not. I took loudness in. Uh, but that is just a matter of taste. I've seen several videos on YouTube complaining about noise effects with Bluetooth boards, so let me just uh, show you what the solution is again that I've used. I use a DC in here with a 16 or a 20 volts Lenovo uh, laptop adapter. I use an 82 ohms decoupling resistor to go in the tone board, which works fine for that side. And I use twice passive filtering, 120 ohms and 22 microns and 100 ohms and 22 microns to get into a standard 7805 5 volts regulator, which has a 470 micron cap and a 100 nanofarad cap on the output side. So to wrap up, just a quick look on the outside. The original input to the speaker becomes the output to the other side speaker. This is the active part. There is a connector for DC in, just a normal connector that is, a, for example, compatible with the 16 volt Lenovo laptop supplies, auxiliary input over here, and the three tone controls on that side. Everything works with a standard Lenovo supply, as mentioned. I've made myself an adapter to be able to hook up a 20 volts uh, Lenovo supply as well. Gives a little bit more output power, and depending on which laptop you carry with you, that's the more convenient solution. Thanks for looking at my video and hope to see you on the channel again soon. Thanks.